Okay, so picture this. You're, uh, you're lying out on your beach towel, the sun's all warm, and you've got waves crashing in the background. Sounds pretty idyllic. Yeah, like summer bliss, right. Right. But uh, how would you describe that in more than just, you know, basic English? That's interesting because we often experience these moments that are full of sensory detail. Yeah. But uh, maybe we don't have the vocabulary to express them. Exactly. And that's where a deep dive comes in today. I like it. A deep dive. Yeah. So <laughs> we're looking at this article, 22 Summer Vocabulary Words for the Hot Season. Okay. It's aimed at people learning English, but honestly, there are some really good words in here for anyone. So it's kind of like taking those mental pictures we have and giving us the tools to describe them in really vivid detail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like imagine if you could just, you know, use your words to make someone feel that sweltering heat or like a gentle ocean breeze. I love that. So uh, this article starts out with words about weather and temperature. Makes sense. Got to set the scene, right? Right. And they kick it off with the word scorching. Ugh. Scorching. That's a good one. Yeah, it goes beyond just hot. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm. It's intense, like dangerously hot. Like think about a desert. You know, middle of the day, and the heat's just radiating off the sand. Yeah, like you need to get out of the sun immediately. Exactly. But then there's blazing. Oh, blazing. Which, uh, it means, like, intensely hot and bright. Hmm. That's a good distinction. Yeah, so, like, scorching is more about the intensity. Yeah. And blazing is more about the brightness. And the heat, too, right? Yeah, both. So, like, a scorching sun might make you think about danger, whereas a blazing sun is more like a beautiful sunset. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's the same heat, but a different feeling. Totally. Like one's kind of scary and the other one's beautiful. Okay. And then they have the word humid. Oh, humid. Which means there's a lot of moisture in the air. Uh, yeah. I'll give you the example. The summer air felt humid, making it harder to stay cool. Yeah, that's the word. So it's not really about the temperature. It's more about how the air feels. Exactly. It's that heavy, sticky feeling. It's like the air is clinging to you, you know? Yeah. Do you remember that time we were in that tropical forest? It wasn't even that hot, but the humidity. Oh my gosh, yes. It was like walking through soup. I know. And it wasn't even that hot. Yeah. It's crazy how much humidity can change how the temperature feels. And then there's heat wave. Heat wave. Now that's a scary word. Yeah. It, it means like a really long period of really hot weather. So not just one hot day, but like days or even weeks of extreme heat. Exactly. So it's not just about being uncomfortable. It can actually disrupt like daily life and stuff. Yeah, it can be dangerous, like power grids get overloaded and there are health risks, especially for, you know, older people or people who are already sick. Yeah, a heat wave is definitely serious business. Well, that got a little intense. Yeah, maybe we should move on to something a little more fun. I agree. How about we talk about some of the fun things we actually do during summer? Oh yeah, let's do that. I'm ready for some summer vibes. Me too. Let's see what the article has to say about that. Okay, so we've got like the scorching heat, the humidity, all that. Right, the setting for our summer adventure. Exactly. Now let's talk about what we actually do during the summer, you know. Yeah, all those fun summer activities. Exactly. So this article has a section about summer activities. And uh, the first one that really jumped out at me was sunbathe. Yeah, sunbathe. It seems pretty simple, right? Yeah. But the article points out that it's not just about being in the sun. It's about intentionally like soaking up the rays. Oh, yeah, like... We sunbathed on the sandy beach for hours. Exactly. Soaking it all in. Yeah, you're not just outside. You're choosing to be in the sun. Right. It's all about that summer tan. And that feeling of the warm sun on your skin. Yeah, totally. But sometimes all that sun and heat can get to be a bit much. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's when sunbathe turns into swelter. Swelter. Ugh, I hate that feeling. Yeah, it's like that awful, sticky, suffocating feeling. Like way worse than just being hot. The article uses the example, we sweltered in the heat while waiting for the ice cream truck. Oh my gosh, that's the worst. Yeah, you're so hot and uncomfortable, and all you can think about is that ice cream. Yeah, and it's like you can just picture it, you know, people sweating and their clothes sticking to them. Okay, let's move on before we get too uncomfortable. Yeah. How about something more fun, like a barbecue? Ah, uh, yes. The classic summer barbecue they just say like we had a family barbecue in the backyard last weekend yeah but it makes you realize that barbecues are like more than just a meal you know totally it's about getting together with family and friends yeah and being outside enjoying the nice weather and grilling up some delicious food that's like a whole cultural thing you know a summer tradition absolutely all right let's keep moving with the activities how about surfing Ooh, surfing now we're talking the article says it's a sport where a person rides on ocean waves with a surfboard. 
And then they give an example like, surfing in the summer waves was a thrilling experience. I bet. Sounds amazing. Yeah, but it's more than just riding a wave, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's like about freedom and connecting with the power of the ocean. Yeah, and like skill and balance. Right, you have to be in tune with the waves and the currents. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe let's come back to shore for a bit. Okay, sounds good. How about a nice, relaxing picnic? Oh, a picnic, perfect. They describe it as a meal enjoyed outdoors, often in a park or by the beach. So classic. And they give this example. We packed sandwiches and drinks for a picnic at the lake. I love that. Simple and peaceful. Yeah, just enjoying nature and good food. What could be better? All right, so we've got sunbathing, sweltering, barbecuing, surfing, and picnicking. That's a pretty good start to a summer. Definitely. But, you know, summer is more than just activities. True. There's all that beautiful nature to appreciate, too. Exactly. So let's shift gears a bit and see what the article has to say about all the amazing things we see in nature during the summer. Okay, I'm ready for some breathtaking scenery. All right, let's trade those picnic baskets in for, uh, for some hiking foods because we are headed into summer nature. Okay, I like it. Summer nature. So this is all about like the sights and sounds and all the little details that make summer landscapes so, you know, amazing. Yeah, and how we describe them. It's not just, you know, looking at a picture. It's about being able to actually like transport someone there with your words. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they start with a classic summer image, the sunflower. Ah, the sunflower. So they say it's, you know, a little tall yellow flower that often blooms in the summer. And they use this example a meadow covered in wildflowers, creating a colorful summer landscape. Beautiful. Yeah, so it's like those iconic fields of sunflowers with their, you know, big yellow heads all facing the sun. And it makes you think, you know, why are they so connected to summertime? Well, they love the warmth and the sunlight. Yeah, they're like the ultimate summer plant. And speaking of things that make you feel good during the summer, how about an ocean breeze? Oh, yeah, ocean breeze. That's the best. They describe it as a light wind blowing from the ocean, often cooling down a coastal area. It's like nature's air conditioning. Yeah, exactly. And they give the example, the ocean breeze felt refreshing after the hot walk on the beach. Perfect. You can just feel it, that cool air on your skin and the smell of the ocean. Yeah. And it's not just about us feeling good. You yeah. know, those breezes are really important for the coastal ecosystems, too. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, they help regulate the temperature and, you know, create currents and they support all the marine life. It's all connected. Yeah, it makes you appreciate those breezes even more. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's dive into a world that's full of life and color. Coral reefs. Ooh, coral reefs? They describe them as, you know, a vibrant underwater ecosystem made of coral that thrives in warm waters. Amazing. And then they say the coral reef was full of colorful fish and sea creatures. Like an underwater paradise. I know, right? <laughs> but they're not just pretty to look at. They're super important. You know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like they provide a habitat for tons of different species and they protect the coastline from erosion. Exactly. OK, let's come back up to the surface now and talk about those bursts of color that we see on land during the summer wildflowers. Wildflowers. I love wildflowers. Me too. They give this example, a meadow covered in wildflowers, creating a colorful summer landscape. Yeah, it's like nature's confetti. I know, right? And it's such a different kind of beauty than like you know, a perfectly manicured garden. Oh, yeah, totally. It's wild and free and unpredictable. And those wallflowers are super important for supporting biodiversity. You know, they provide food and a habitat for all sorts of insects and birds. Yeah, they're like little ecosystems all on their own. All right, let's talk about something else that's super iconic. Yeah. You know, when you think about summer landscapes, those big mounds of sa sand dunes. Sand dunes. I love climbing sand dunes. They define them as... Uh, hills or mounds of sand often found near beaches and deserts. Yeah, and they're always changing. The wind and the waves are always reshaping them. Yeah, and they use this example. We climb the sand dunes and watch the sunset over the ocean. Oh, that's so beautiful. And they're not just there to look pretty either. Oh, I know. They're actually really important for protecting the coastline from erosion. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, we've talked about all the nature stuff. Maybe we should take a little detour into, you know, clothing and accessories. Oh, okay. Got to have the right gear for summer adventures, right? Right. So what's more essential for summer than sunscreen? Sunscreen, that's definitely number one. It's a lotion or spray used to protect the skin from the sun's harmful rays. Yeah, I got to protect that skin. And they say, we applied sunscreen before heading to the beach. Simple but important. 
Yeah, and how about those super comfy flip-flops? Flip-flops, the official shoe of summer. They're perfect for the beach. And then there's the swimsuit, of course. Yeah, gotta have a swimsuit. It says, everyone wore colorful swimsuits at the pool party. I love that, colorful swimsuits. And then there's the super stylish and practical sun hat. Oh yeah, sun hat, to keep that sun out of your eyes. Exactly, they say, she wore a sun hat to shield her face from the strong sunlight. Very important. And of course, we can't forget the sunglasses. Sunglasses essential for looking cool. And for protecting your eyes. They say, sunglasses helped reduce the glare while we enjoyed our beach day. Yeah, sunglasses are a must-have for summer. Okay, I think we've covered all the clothing and accessories. What's next? Now it's time for the best part, summer treats. Ooh, yes. I'm ready for some deliciousness. So they start out with a classic, the popsicle. Popsicles. I love popsicles. Me too. They're a frozen treat on a stick made from flavored ice. So refreshing. And their example is, we enjoyed popsicles to cool down on the hot afternoon. The perfect summer treat. And then there's that tart and tangy lemonade. Oh, lemonade. So good. They say ice cold lemonade was the perfect drink for a hot summer day. So true. It's the best way to cool down on a hot day. Yeah, it's like the official drink of summer. Yeah. And that's it. We've officially covered all 22 summer vocabulary words. Wow, that was a whirlwind of summer vocabulary. I know, right? Yeah. We've talked about everything from the scorching heat to the refreshing ocean breezes. And all the fun things we do and the beautiful things we see during the summer. And now we have all these amazing words to describe it all. Yeah, no more just hot and sunny. We've got scorching, sweltering, blazing, and so many more. It's like we've leveled up our summer vocabulary. I love it. And remember, language is always changing, so what other words make you think of summer? Maybe it's a sound or a smell or a feeling. Yeah, share those words with us on social media. Let's keep this summer vocabulary conversation going. That's a great idea. All right, everyone, get out there and enjoy the rest of your summer. And keep learning those awesome summer words.